Earth Factor Asia with Lorraine Ha. Energy, looking at the alternatives. Welcome to Earth Factor Asia. In this episode, we'll look at the energy challenges facing the fastest growing region in the world. Solar power is one of the more promising sources being promoted as a natural alternative in Asia. And as we'll find out, China is taking the global lead in producing solar panels. But the massive energy demands of Asia's expanding economies mean an increasing reliance on traditional fuels. And as Rob McBride reports from remote Inner Mongolia, in China's case, coal is still king. Over the rolling landscape of Inner Mongolia, a coal blackened road across the white frigid wastes. This highway, constantly busy with trucks, links the coal mines in this remote corner of China with the rail junctions that lead to the rest of the country. Our destination is one particular colliery, Nalin Miao No. 2. At the time of our visit, the whole of China is locked in its worst winter freeze for decades and is in desperate need of fuel. When we arrive, we find the trucks are backed up, awaiting their turn to fill with coal as fast as it comes out of the ground. Day and night, the trucks keep coming in a steady stream. Given China's need for energy, every lump of coal that comes out of the ground here is in demand. At a time when the world is obsessed with finding energy alternatives, China finds itself with no alternative but to exploit its vast coal reserves. A moderate-sized mine, this pit normally operates at 13,000 tonnes per day. At the moment, production is topping 17 to 18,000 tonnes, with all shifts working overtime. China's coal mines are notorious, making the headlines with almost daily tragedies. But this mine, opened in 2006, is considered one of the most modern here. With mine manager Zhang Mingliang, we're off to see for ourselves the coal that's helping to fuel this vast country's growth. Highly automated, there are relatively few miners underground. Walking down darkened tunnels and picking our way between the hydraulic supports, we eventually find ourselves on the coal face itself. Just a short distance in front of us, the shearing teeth of powerful mining equipment, ripping coal from the work face and sending shards of smaller lumps flying back at us. Efficiently extracting hundreds of tons per hour, the company is happy to show off its operation. The company is prouder still of its safety record. Not one death since the mine opened, despite the inherent dangers of coal mining. Safety is our number one consideration. Our company has a slogan that we would rather lose one million tons of coal than lose the life of a single miner. This mining company has invested heavily in safety. In the colliery's control room, the electronic message board delivers the latest safety pronouncements. As Chinese mining becomes more modern, so it's using more technology. But employing better technology when that coal is burned is something that concerns a growing number of energy experts and scientists. China is building on the order of a, a new 1,000 megawatt power plant every week, and it's going to uh, expect it to triple its coal use uh, over the next several decades. Uh, so that if we are continuing to use the same technology that we are using today, or China is using today, uh, that will produce immense quantities of greenhouse gases, principally carbon dioxide. Sure. More and more overseas experts are now partnering with China to share clean coal technology. So our role is to make sure that if we have to use it, let's use it as cleanly and efficiently as possible. What options does a country uh, like ours in Canada or a country like China uh, have uh, at their disposal? So although coal has this lingering bad reputation, but uh, believe it or not, clean coal technologies do exist. And there are technologies that can be deployed uh, on a wide scale today that can create what we call near zero emissions.
Carbon capture and storage certainly show potential, but just how workable as a solution is still hotly debated. What no one disputes is the value of using technology to burn coal as efficiently as possible. So basically you're using less fuel to generate the same amount of power. Not only you have cost savings, you also generate less emissions to the environment. Back at Nalin Miao No. 2 in the communal dormitories, there are more immediate concerns. The last chance to catch up on sleep before the change of shift. Despite sharing up to 12 beds to a room, these miners are considered well off in terms of conditions and pay. Liu Yingliang has a wife and two children whom he sends money home to. I make about 500 US dollars a month. My living expenses here are about 100 dollars. So we manage to save a few hundred a month. Like thousands of others in mining, Liu can be thankful to coal. In this inhospitable part of China, it provides wealth in a land which would otherwise yield very little. The mining company which employs him, the Yitai Mining Group, is headquartered in the nearby city of Irdus. It has quickly become one of the most important mining towns in the whole of China, with a per capita income higher than Shanghai or Beijing. And it's where many of the miners live when they're not on shift. Working two weeks on and two weeks off, mine manager Tang Xiaoyun has just started his leave relaxing at home with his wife and two daughters. Born and raised in the town, they have seen its rapid development. In the old days, we didn't have any tall buildings here. They were all one story. And when people went to work, they would take the shuttle bus or go by bike. But now maybe half of all the families here have their own car. And that brings problems, like the traffic congestion now is very bad. With China's need for coal, Irdus's continued prosperity is assured, just as the country's growing demand for another fossil fuel is having an international impact. Oil. From Kazakhstan in Central Asia to Africa, China's global search for oil is making its presence felt on a wider geopolitical stage. And China, like so many other energy-hungry economies, has been stepping up its search for other energy options. In doing so, nuclear energy, for so long unfashionable, is enjoying a resurgence. This is the Dia Bay nuclear power plant in southern China. The country's first large commercial reactor, the site is still under development. Four reactors are on stream, two more are being built, and two more still are planned. It's claimed when it's complete, the expansion will make this the biggest nuclear site in the world. Definitely, it's a safe and clean uh, energy. And uh, everybody who wants to come to Dai Bay and see uh, here, there's no chimney uh, from the uh, reactor, no CO2 production, and it's so, so clean. You see, uh, this is a garden city. People like touring around here. We have a lot of visitors coming um, every day. And over the weekend, you see students and the uh, general public touring around with this platform. Despite the upbeat assessment, the nuclear option remains controversial, but one of the less unpleasant in a world running short on good ones. I personally believe nuclear power is an important clean option, and uh, one, again, where the current designs are not not adequate either from a from a waste product or a proliferation standpoint but certainly we have the capability of, of designing and engineering and installing a safe nuclear technology that could be used on a worldwide basis and I believe that is essential to a sustainable energy future in this uh, in this century. Certainly China has decided that the solution lies in part with more plants like Dia Bay. China has the intention to uh, increase the, uh, the energy mix and also diversity of uh, energy. China has a plan to uh, increase the capa nuclear capacity to 4% by the year 2020. And by then we should have 40 units running uh, of this size and uh, 18 units under construction. Such a nuclear vision is still decades away. 
And for now, the miners at Nalin Miao number two can count on long careers in coal. Jobs for life for themselves, for their sons too.